What's up guys, it's Jimmy Ride and I. We're gonna be playing Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo because this story is insane. Dad! Jenny!
Hi, sweetie. Thanks for getting back to me so quickly. It's about an old client, a friend from Big Sur, Ed Miller. He claims it's his fault that his daughter and her mother are dead. He was driving when their car went off a cliff. And he tried to kill himself. He's been in the hospital for a week. He can't get out of bed because of uh, vertigo, I think. Oh, and he was dehydrated. Probably because of um, alcohol. Robert? If you could, I would take care of everything. Travel expenses, hotels, fees. Robert? Whatever you need. I think I remember this Ed Miller. The writer? The one it all started with? Claire Miller, I'm Dr. Loma. Robert Kerrigan asked, Doctor, you have no idea how grateful I am to you for bringing Ed home. It's a long drive from LA. When will you get here? If all goes well, early tomorrow morning. I want to get started with Ed immediately. I'll be waiting for you. A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor?
Bachelor's in Psychology from UC Berkeley. Master's in <clears throat> Systemic and Family Psychotherapy from the University why, of Michigan. Why, Robert? And why? <laughs> doctorate in Clinical Psychology from Stanford. <laughs> Why? Hmm. I'll give you free reign over my memories, my trauma, my room, my troubles. You got one hour. One. He's lost. He knows that he'll never recover on his own, but that doesn't keep him from feeling threatened by me. Or is that just his way of asking for help? Should we get started? Take talk, Dr. How do you feel right now? Pretty fucking shitty. Like when some idiot comes and pours salt on your wound. Hmm? If you're only going to give me an hour, it could at least be a fruitful one. Shitty? Why? Why? Because I lost a daughter? Because I killed two people? Because everyone treats me like I'm crazy? Because I pee in a bottle from a dolly painting? Because everything is surreal? Because... Because of you. Does shitty work or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Okay. I'll keep going. Shitty, shitty, shitty. Cause he's loaded, feels guilty, is simply bored. I thought you were friends. What difference does that make? You say it's your fault that your daughter and her mother died? And you don't want to believe me. <laughs> of course. There aren't any birth records connecting you to a daughter. <sighs> I had this woman Faye exists. What do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? It was about a year ago. I just sat down to work. I'd had writer's block for years. But I remembered something I'd made up in an interview. And here today to talk about how to revive your creativity is Ed Miller, author of Face to the Ground, our book recommendation of the month. Ed, can I call you Ed? Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Though I wasn't too sure you took bribes. Pretty good caviar, right? <laughs> Just to be clear, you're joking here. 
Remember, you're on public radio. <laughs> Even better, no one's listening. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Ed, have you ever experienced blank page syndrome? <laughs> Constantly. And uh, how do you deal with it? I do a kind of, I don't know, warm-up? If the mind doesn't want to start, then we have to ask the body to. So I let my eyes search for a starting point. When my eyes find the word, then it's my fingers' turn. I let them write whatever they want after that word. The trick is not to think. Let them be free. Really? Coming, Samuel. Please open the door. Hi. Uh. Hi? It hurts. Ugh. It hurts me just looking at it. Were you trying to get me to faint? Uh, no. I tripped, and... Can you help me? My battery's dead, and there are no other houses nearby. Ugh. I'm no doctor, but that looks really bad. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of something, but I'll take you to the hospital. No, don't. I'm between jobs, no insurance, no money. I need to lie down, please. Don't worry. The hospital bill's on me. What? No, I couldn't. What if it's nothing? I need to rest. If you bleed to death, you mop it up.
Can I lean on you? Um, maybe you should ask before you actually lean on the person. Ow, oh, 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 hold on, slower. No, oh, uh, hold on, um, not so fast. Don't take this the wrong way, but this would be faster if I carried you. Uh, I can walk, just don't go so fast. Uh, ow! Oh, fine, carry me. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna grab you here, okay? And here, and lift you up, okay? Yeah, okay. Is that okay with you? That's okay with me. All right, here we go. All right. Hey, am I that heavy? If you had taken your backpack off... Okay, I'm going to let you go. Hold on, hold on. Let me take my backpack off. Now? You want my back to hurt too? Mine already does. <laughs> All right. May I? You may. Do I? Please do. All right. Oh. Phew. Finally. Thank you. Great. Now it's time to rest. I'm going upstairs to finish something and, uh... Hang on. Thanks. Um, what did you say your name was? My name is Ed. Thanks, Ed. I'm Faye. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. <sighs> All right? Some ice. Yeah, I can. Wait, wait. Gently. You're all set. I'll be upstairs, okay? Mm, okay. <sighs> Get off of there. Come on. Move it. Move it.
What? You don't cook either, pet. You eat that fast. No, no. We're gonna listen to the vent. Hi! Guess who's calling? <laughs> I bet you don't even know how I got your number. The thing is, I'd like to see you again. Oh. I think I lost an earring. If you You there? I'm up here. Upstairs. Oh, great. I thought you left. Hey, the ice worked. My ankle looks brand spanking new. Yeah, you heal quickly. Always have. By the way, thanks for the blanket. Oh. It was the least I could do. Didn't want you to freeze to death. Not possible. I never die. <sighs> Besides, I usually warm up fast. <sighs> Have you eaten? I'm hungry. I can order something online. Something? My favorite. It's the local specialty. I ordered it yesterday. And the day before. There might even be leftovers in the fridge. Something left over? Even better! I'll check the fridge. Don't order anything, okay? Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Porn? 
Something left over? Porn. It's something... I'm writing. Oh, you write? What do you write, Ed? Honestly? I haven't written in years. Today was an exception. Oh, wow. We'll have to celebrate exceptionally. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? Ask where you carried this from? Your kitchen. It was just sitting out. Ha! I left it there so you'd find it. <gasps> no way! I fell for it? Sorry to say, but yeah. Hmm. Do you do that with all the hikers? So far, seven, eight this week. Ah, <gasps> no shame. And then? Then we toast. Anything else you want to know? Ask. You have until I finish my glass. The riskier the question, the bigger the sip. I'm not about to ask you the classic uh, work or study question, but uh, do you work or study? Neither. I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. Hmm. Short sip. What are you doing in Cerro Lake? Guess. I'm looking for someone. Who? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. Hmm. Short sip. All right, you've got one more. Make it count. Do you feel like spending the night? Will you cover me up like last time? Or better, you have my word. Words. Now I get why you're so well-spoken. Wolf, Bierce, Plath, Poe, a host of tragic deaths. Should I be scared? My favorite one's missing. The sun of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Mm-hmm. How did he die? Uh, suicide. I should be scared. Hey, look! One who's alive. I'm saved. Do you like Ed Miller? You're speaking to him right now. Ed Miller. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah, sure. 
You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. Oh. Hmm. Did he hurt you at all? The worst part is he didn't even know it. I was about 13. I was obsessed with this book. Well, the cheapo edition. I heard he was doing a book signing at Rossmore Books. I pretended I was sick to skip school, but my parents didn't buy it. I tried to leave during recess and got caught. After school, I ran so fast that one of my heels broke and I twisted my ankle. But I made it. I got in line and waited and waited. And when there were only three people left in front of me, this old guy showed up, his editor, I think. White hair, white suit. You still here? What about the radio interview? And he took him away. The end. I never even saw his face. Getting grounded felt worse than the ankle, but not nearly as bad as the letdown. Anywho, 13 years old. Did you really never see his face? He was looking down at the books the whole time, plus people were in the way. And you've never seen a picture of him? Online, in the newspapers? Maybe, but I don't remember. Turn it over. Yes! No! Yes. Of course! You even told me! I thought you were joking. I, I have to see this with my own... Oh! Petronius, what did I tell you, huh? Sorry, your, your ankle. It's, it's fine, it's fine. I think he doesn't like me, is all. He doesn't like any girl. He's quite possessive. Oh, so do you get a lot of lady callers? Nobody comes here, except for my neighbor, Samuel Franklin. Oh, should I lock the door and turn off the lights? Or would you rather I get another glass? Anyway... I'm 23 now. I'll never learn. Do you remember the song that Buster sings at the end of the book? I wrote it. Did you write the music? It's a novel. You can't hear it. I could. What? What? No. <gasps> no. Sing it. No way. Sing it. No, no. Please sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. I've always wanted to hear the song, but I'm so damn musically challenged. Itch in me hates all that I am. The bitch in you hates all that you are. But when we 
are together Hate each other twice as much That's the reason why we will never part Which goes to show just how itchy we are and ever meant to cause you any harm Cause darling, you need no help with that But it's so fucking funny To see how you destroy your life Or in your case To see how I wreck my What a waste it'd be if we didn't team up Which goes to show just how bitchy we are And then, um, I don't think I need to go into detail about what happened. And why not? Okay, um... No. I'd rather not feed your morbid curiosity. But there's something I do want to know. Do you remember the date? I don't even know today's date. Our brain gathers much more information than we think. Look here. No, no, no. You want to hypnotize me? Please. <laughs> I thought Robert would hire a real professional. How do you plan on getting out of this bed? <laughs> so let's go back to that day. You wrote a novel a while back, but you've been suffering writer's block for years. You look through your office window, leaves dance in the wind, Birds sing up in the sky. There's a mug in your hands, a warm feeling, a comforting scent. You look at a tree, and suddenly, an idea. Your cat interrupts you, begging for food. And when you go feed it... There's someone at the door.
I'm coming, Samuel. Please, open the door. Hi. Uh, hi? It hurts. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. All right? You mentioned a certain Samuel. He lives a five-minute drive away, across the forest, with his wife. You call your cat Pat. It's short for Petronius. And does he like ginger ale, like the one in the door into summer? I read too. Have you had other pets? I didn't even want pet, but I couldn't say no. Where did you get him? From Aunt Claire, shortly after moving here. So you don't get lonely. Which is exactly what you were looking for. <laughs> Why haven't I seen him around the house? He'll go missing. When? I don't know yet. Do you like to drink? Wine. Never on my own. Why? People like me better that way. How did she do it? I haven't asked her yet.
Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Oh. Why are you so put off by psychology? If it weren't for my aunt, I'd be dead right now. Explain. You'd had writer's block for years. How did it feel to write again? Hopeful, scary. Will you keep the idea going? We'll see. Is your cell on, Ed? Yes. What's the date on the screen? October 8th. You bought it at an auction, right? Who had it belong to? The first American flapper, as F. Scott put it. Zelda Fitzgerald? And her husband... I'm sure you know they both ended up in psychiatric treatment. He was an alcoholic. He had died of tuberculosis. She had schizophrenia and died in a fire at the insane asylum. Got it. Thank you. All good? <laughs> As I was saying, you have no idea how sorry I am that this didn't work out. Hmm. I had to give it a try. So you did it. Cured. <laughs> I'm not going to cure you. You are. We'll continue this later. 
get some rest. The smile of the nurse that tore you from your mother's arms. Your first lover. Sleepless in an unknown house, in an unknown bed, staring at an unknown body. Spiders lining up to dive into your empty mouth. All of your TV sets aching to be turned on again. A roach scratching its belly with the bristles of your toothbrush. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good tickle? And then, you hear? Uh, doctor! How long have you been here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Who's the poem by? Oh gosh, I like to come up with verses while I work. Oh, so then this is where Ed gets it from. Or from my brother, his father. It runs in the family. Where is his father? Hmm. Where did I put the sauce? Oh, it's right over there. I'll get it. Oh, don't be silly. Eddie loves three bean chili. He used to ask me to make it all the time when he was little. What about his parents? Care to eat lunch with me? I usually eat with Ed upstairs, but it's no big deal if he eats alone for once. Besides, I made enough chili to feed an army. I appreciate it, but I think it would be better for Ed if you ate together. I think I might need a little fresh air to take a break and maybe uh, organize some of my notes. You should check out the dock. Plenty of sun at this time of day. I'll make you a sandwich. What do you think about Ed? He's a little stubborn, isn't he? Will he walk soon? It's still too soon to venture a hypothesis. Well, I guess he should just focus on doing his exercises, right? What exercises? Ham, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise? Yes, that's perfect. Well, if I was able to help him last time, I'm sure a doctor like you will manage. Help him with what exactly? Vertigo. Vertigo? Oh, let me tell you, Eddie was never afraid of heights as a child. No pirate captain ever is. You see that tree? The one with the deck chair? There used to be a little tree house in it. Ed would spend hours on end up there. My brother built it for him. Then Eddie turned it into his very own pirate ship. It was all he could talk about. Pirate this, pirate that. He was obsessed with pirates ever since I got him a book by Salgari. And with his love of pirates, came a love of reading, too. And see, that's where the writing began. Mystery solved!
I don't mean to pry, but... Where are his parents? Off you go then, Doctor. Or you might not have time to eat your sandwich. First, you have to pick a stone. This one? Julia, sweetie. That's the best skipping stone I have ever seen. <laughs> now, remember how to do it? Knees bent, high knee out, arms back, limp wrist, riding fingers, stone level with the ground. Eyes on the water, flick your wrist and the stone. Skips! Flick your wrist and... Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure next time will work out better. Ed is reluctant and even hostile towards therapy. Why? Claire is hiding something, and it is somehow causing Ed to keep his guard up with me. Hmm, I've never seen such an intense case of vertigo before. Something tells me that Ed isn't lying about that part of the story. Besides, the case reports were conclusive. Does she exist? There are too many details. Little things that somehow make sense. Faye exists. Or existed. What about that earlier Vertigo episode? And his parents? Something happened in his childhood. But Claire isn't going to tell me. Maybe Robert? Or Ed himself, if I can break through this wall he's put up. I'll have to give it a try.
The number you are trying to reach is currently unavailable. Who am I speaking to? Dr. Lomas? Who is this? Uh, it's Sheriff Reyes. Dr. Leonard gave me your number. How are you, Sheriff? Um, look, I don't want you to breach patient doctor confidentiality or anything, but... I mean, something comes up in your conversations with Miller. Is Ed under investigation? Is he the suspect of a crime? No, not exactly. If I understood correctly, Ed hasn't committed any crime. Well, we'll have to see about that. So, will you give me a hand? I'm not in a position to make any promises. Mm-hmm. Well, I understand, Doctor. I would settle for anything at all. Maybe someone saw something. I'm on my way to his neighbors as we speak. The Franklin? Nick, you there? Sorry, I gotta go. What is it this time, Adam? Tell me you saw my email with the slogan proposals. Yeah, great stuff, kid. Ah, I'm not sure which one I like the best. I like the sixth one. Um, yeah. Uh, that one was, uh... Vote for Sheriff Reyes. The sneaky bastard who would have known there were only three slogans if he'd read the... Adam, do I have to tell your aunt and uncle you have no respect for your elders? You at the ranch yet? I'm on my way. Look, if anyone asks, I was working on Saturday night, okay? Mm. I skipped the monthly dinner. Hello, Samuel. Did you know your nephew was a sneaky bastard? <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Hey, I'll check that out once I got a signal again, okay?
refresh. Adam, are your aunt and uncle usually home at this time? Uh, my uncle's probably in the barn, and if my aunt's not home, she's at the store. They're not answering, just go on in. Right. You want your uncle to accuse me of breaking and entering? in here like this. Espacio.
you guys are wondering why I'm doing this carrot thing three times, I need the trophy, just so you know. Gusto es mío. Nick, you there? Just a reminder, you got a meeting with the mayor in half an hour. Oh no. Hey, I can hear Frankie Lane. How is he? I don't think your uncle's taking very good care of him. Seriously? The old man is really losing it. You'll be here on time, right? Uh, you better fill in for me, all right? Again? Sneaky bastard.
least they didn't rob you.
I was just going to call you. Ed's waiting. Ed? Mm. Shall we start? Why don't you tell me about your childhood? What do you want to know? What you played? How high up? The treehouse is beautiful. It was...
right, Scallywax. Now we've got it. Heave ho! Hmm. Lanigan, me ho! It's not in your cabin, Captain Roberts. Blame me, Lanigan. I can't board that ship without me hook. I think it's back on School Island, Captain. You better bring it to me soon, unless you want to end up a shark. Dad, bud, come to my office, please. Okay, Dad. Flanagan, get all hands on deck. Oi, Captain. Governor Miller requires me presence at the forecast to discuss highly important matters. Step aside, me hearty Flanagan. <clears throat> We're approaching the jeer at the end of the world. Flanagan, take the hell. Or must I take care of everything? My hook, the scoundrel I got my hat from, stole it from me. I must exercise caution and... Richard Longfinger Evans. You're the filthiest scum in the Caribbean. Rats! You found me! Of course. Hmm. Now! Be grateful that I'm as generous as I am brave. By the way, the hat is fine, thank you. I've got crew members stationed all over the Caribbean to gather intelligence on my enemies. What good tidings bring ye, pirate spy Tremel Neck? Not a sea monster in sight, since you vanquished... Even the most fearsome pirate ships need lifeboats, because anyone can have a bad day. What good tidings bring ye, pirate spy Galonk? All is well, Captain Roberts.
Now is a good time to wet me whistle. I'm as thirsty as... Ed, are you there? You coming up? Yes, Dad. What good tidings bring ye, pirate spy Yanez de Gomera? Your enemies fear ye, and peace reigns supreme, Capitan Robertos. Buddy, you knocked so softly that I barely even heard you. Come and say hi the way we do. Remember the Pirate Brotherhood secret handshake? There is no lost cause. As long as there's one remaining madman who fights for it, The Pirate Brotherhood will be victorious! Yes. We're getting better at this. Open the window for me, will ya? Secret handshakes are like everything else. The more you practice, the better you get. Hmm. Anyway, do you have something you want to tell me? Sorry I took so long, but I, uh, uh... Well, you could have taken less time, for sure. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. How's your morning? More productive than mine, I hope. Well, bad at first, because I'd lost my hook. Darn. That hook is so cool. I know, but then I found it. The hatter from Skull Island horn-soggled it. <laughs> you know what? With that imagination of yours and this never-ending chapter, you'll probably make it as a writer, way before I do. Whoa. By the way, do you- When you finish the novel, can we go on a trip? Yes, start thinking about where you want to go. And now, what would you say if... Is Mom back from the store? Mm -mm. Nice. What do you say you go to the garage and bring me a... You know what. Oh, and the most important thing is that nobody can ever know. Nobody... nobody? Nobody... nobody. It's our secret. A secret pirate brotherhood exactly. pact? Exactly. A secret pirate brotherhood pact. Signed in blood. Signed in... Ink. Wait. Ink? You'll see. Ink. Okay, so what could the symbol of the Pirate Brotherhood be? My hook. Excellent choice. Let's do it. <laughs> It's awesome! Secret pact? Secret pact! <laughs> Alright then, hurry up. You know your mission. <laughs> 